Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Spider-Man No Way Home delighted us with how TMI the crossover chatter among the Peter Parkers got, covering everything from dead girlfriends, back pain, murderous best friends, and which orifices Toby's webbing spews out of? One critical question that was left out was the exact circumstances of Tom Holland Peter Parker's origin, especially because we got confirmation that Oscorp does not exist in the MCU, leading many to now ask, then what spider did bite this Peter Parker? Oh, and uh, while we're at it, I got a suspicious bite that I would love for someone to take a look at. Uh, Jesus. Uh, maybe it was just that sleep paralysis demon who takes over sometimes and pushes the Mephisto theories. It's him, not me. Anyway, when the MCU first rebooted Peter Parker as Tom Holland, they avoided focusing too much on Peter's origin. In Civil War, Peter Parker is introduced as a street-level hero who had been appearing on YouTube for six months by the time Tony Stark met him, and they refer to Peter's origin only in vague terms. It's just that when whatever happened happened, it's like my senses have been dialed to 11. There's, there's way too much input, so. They, they just kind of helped me focus. Spider-Man Homecoming confirmed it was indeed a spider that bit Peter to give him these powers. You got bit by a spider? Can it bite me? Well, it probably would've hurt, right? You know what, whatever. Even if it did hurt, I would let it bite me. M maybe. How much did it hurt? The spider's dead, Ned. And then No Way Home seemed like it would finally address that bite. Ever since I got bit by that spider, I've only had one week where my life has felt normal. That was when you found out. But then, as Peter meets his alternate selves, they discuss their alternate histories and varying web shooting abilities, but the exact nature of the spiders that bit them never comes up. And to further stoke confusion, Norman Osborn talks about how the MCU is different from his home reality, saying, I had nowhere else to go. Someone's living in my house. Oscorp doesn't exist. Also, is anyone eating these donuts because this stolen coat's got pockets, honey? Godspeed, chocolate glaze! Later on, Norman compliments Peter's engineer skills saying, when all this is over, if you need a job and you're willing to commute to another universe, a reminder that Peter would need to go to a whole other reality to work for Oscorp, and that Oscorp does not exist in the MCU, at least not yet. And in the minds of many comic readers, Oscorp is the source of the spider bite that creates Spider-Man. In the Ultimate Comics Earth-1610 universe, both Peter Parker and Miles Morales are bitten by spiders experimented on by Oscorp in an attempt to perfect a super soldier serum. This was the case in the 2012 Amazing Spider-Man film starring Andrew Garfield, in which Peter's bite came from an Oscorp spider and their experiments to derive human healing properties from animals, part of Dr. Connor's experiments, which the 2014 follow-up film explored deeper as part of research by Norman Osborn and Peter's father, implying the Parker DNA was why that bite worked on Peter. Now, of course, the MCU is set in a whole alternate reality, both from that film universe and from the comics. Technically, it's Earth-199999. And since Oscorp is a Sony film property, the MCU films, Disney properties, that don't partner with Sony can't really feature Oscorp in their storylines. But really, Oscorp hasn't always been the source of Peter's spider bite. Like in the classic 616 continuity, the spider that bit Peter was one that was hit with a burst of gamma radiation by the General Tektronix Corporation. In the 2002 Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, it was a genetics lab at Columbia University. And in the animated Into the Spider-Verse film, Miles Morales' spider bite came from the Alchemex Corporation. Therefore, the MCU Peter Parker's spider bite could have come from a separate source in Oscorp altogether because the MCU is filled with weapons developers like S.H.I.E.L.D., HYDRA, the Wakandans, PIMTECH, HAMMERTECH, AIM, Adrian Toomes' crew, Ultron, the Ten Rings, the Red Room, all those scrolls in hiding, and of course, Stark Industries and its various disaffected former employees. Now, how do I keep my energy up as I'm plowing through these breakdowns, you may wonder? Well, that's all thanks to Emmy. Emmy is the world's first low-carb, high-protein, 100% plant-based instant ramen. Each serving of Emmy has 21 grams of protein, 19 grams of fiber, and only 6 grams of net carbs. It's non-GMO and is 35% lower in sodium than traditional brands. The flavor I've been enjoying is Black Garlic Chicken. Chicken. It's all good. With only six grams of net carbs per serving, Emmy makes it easy to reach your healthy goals. The 21 grams of plant-based dairy-free protein helps you stay full longer, and the 18 grams of fiber and 35% less sodium than other instant ramen brands keeps you from getting that weird thirst after you just downed a bowl of liquid. Emmy is super easy to prepare in the microwave or stovetop, and you can have a bowl ready in seven minutes. They've got some great flavors to pick from. Black garlic chicken, but also spicy beef, 
Tom Yum Shrimp, stock your pantry with some delicious, healthy Emmy ramen by clicking the link below and using code NEWROCKSTARS at checkout. Or go to emmyeats.com slash newrockstars for $5 off your order. That's emmyeats.com slash newrockstars or click the link below and use code NEWROCKSTARS for $5 off a variety pack today. In Civil War, Peter said that he had had his powers for six months. And since Civil War was set in May 2016, this means the bite occurred sometime in late 2015. And that period in history was shortly after Tony Stark left Manhattan and moved all the Avengers operations to his upstate New York compound. However, much of his technology was left behind in that Midtown Tower, based on Happy Hogan being assigned to move the rest of Tony's stuff out of the tower in Spider-Man Homecoming. That included some dangerous shit, like several arc reactors, Iron Man Mark 42 armor, a new prototype Captain America shield, Thor's magic belt. So we got a pretty big window in which some of the world's most advanced technology and research was left behind largely unattended in the middle of New York City. And remember, this was also the period in history when Tony Stark heavily invested in all kinds of odd projects, like the Raft prison facility he built for the government, his BARF technology that he got from Quentin Beck, the various MIT student projects that he funded, and curiously, a fresh Spider-Man suit that he had ready to go within days of supposedly meeting Peter Parker in Queens for the first time. Time and time again, the MCU Spider-Man film set Peter Parker in a world impacted in every possible way by Tony Stark. Adrian Toomes, Quentin Beck, both Stark-created villains, the suits, the blip. Even Peter's cures for the villains in No Way Home came from the Stark fabricator. So, coming back to that moment in Civil War, when Tony said that he knew of a kid in Queens, do we really think he was just stalking Peter's heroics on YouTube? Or, as he sneakily hinted throughout Spider-Man Homecoming, that he was actually monitoring Peter's every move, even stuff Peter thought that Happy and Tony totally ignored. Stay close to the ground. Build up your game helping the little people. Like that lady that bought you the churro. Uh, I'm at band practice. That's odd. Happy told me you quit band six weeks ago. And since Kevin Feige confirmed that the kid that Tony saved at the Stark Expo in Iron Man 2 was a young Peter Parker, is it really that big of a reach to assume that some prior connection could have existed between Peter and Stark? Because remember, Bruce Banner said that he cured himself by spending 18 months in the Gamma Lab, a Gamma Lab that seems to show up in She-Hulk. And presumably, some version of this lab must have existed in Avengers Tower, considering Bruce Banner was hanging up his laundry there. So I think sometime during the Avengers transition upstate in late 2015, a young Peter Parker snooped around the abandoned lab of his icons, got bitten by a spider that was irradiated the same way the spider was originally irradiated in the 60s comics, and Tony Stark found out about this and began tracking this kid as a potential recruit. And he ordered Happy Hogan to clear the rest of that stuff out of the tower so it would never happen again. So how did the MCU Peter Parker get bitten by a spider without Oscorp? Easy. Classic gamma radiation from the same source of everything else in the MCU, Stark Industries. The cause of and solution to all life's problems. You can support New Rockstars by checking out our merch options at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.